So in this lesson, we're going to be going over simple ways to record both audio and MIDI information. So first, we're going to record audio directly into the playlist, and then we'll learn how to record it into the playlist on a loop. Finally, we're going to cover recording into the channel rack, which is typically useful if you are using a drum kit or if you want to create beats like you see a lot of people doing on YouTube. So all of that being laid out, let's get into it. So if you've been following our series so far, it is critical to note again that if you're using a Mac and have created an aggregate audio device, every time you enter FL Studio, you have to designate your output here in your mixer. If you don't, then it's not going to properly route and you're not going to hear sound coming out of your speakers or headphones. So keep that in mind. So first let's talk about proper recording technique. We're gonna use the F10 shortcut to access FL Studio's settings menu and navigate over to the audio tab. There's a slider right here that's labeled buffer length, which determines how long FL Studio will allow itself to process incoming audio data before it's sent to the output device. If this buffer length is really low, then sound comes out of your equipment nearly as soon as it enters your microphone. A low buffer is hard on FL Studio though, because number one, it takes up a lot of CPU, and as a result two, it can lead to blips, crackling, and other distortion that you usually don't want on a recording. So ideally, we aim for a buffer length of somewhere between 150 and 250 SMP. That being said, a longer buffer length is fine if you don't need immediate responsiveness from your output. Like let's say that you're recording your guitar into your microphone and you're not listening to the headphones as you do it. A longer buffer length is probably better because it gives you a lesser chance for distortion. Let's go back into the mixer now. From our last lesson, you should have a mixer insert that's taking in the signal from your microphone. And if you don't, and you're not sure how to set it up, go check out our last video on setting up your audio devices. So this insert right here should have its arm disc recording button clicked. Now, for the purpose of this video, I've already recorded all of my data into FL Studio because I can't do that while I make the video. But you're gonna wanna make sure that you have an input selected for this specific insert to record into. So select the audio device that you want here, and then this insert will be all set to record. Let's go to a track in the playlist and designate it to hold the recording we're feeding to our mixer insert. To do this, select the track that you want to hold your recorded data, right click it, select track mode, and then head over to audio track. Again, we're going to choose which insert we're sending it to, and we're going to choose the insert that we're recording from that we designated just now. Now we're going to go ahead and record. To begin this process, what we're going to do is click up here on our little record button, and then a pop-up window is going to appear. Mine came off screen, but I'll drag it in now. This is a nice way to quickly designate what you want to record, but for our purposes, we're actually going to X out of it and designate what we want by right-clicking here on the record button and making sure that only audio is checked. Otherwise, we'd be recording things that we didn't actually want to take in. So now that we've done that, we're going to begin recording by ensuring that we're in song mode rather than pattern mode so that we record into the playlist. Then when you're ready, Hit the play button and you'll hear a small metronome countdown and then you'll start recording. When you're done recording, you're going to want to make sure that you hit the stop button here. What that's going to do is stop the recording process and then also align a new track to be recorded to after the one that you just did. This way when you hit play again, then instead of recording over what you just made, there will be a new track to handle the next recording. This is helpful if you're going to be doing multiple takes. If you try recording a second take this way, there's something that you have to note. When you hit play and then the recording process begins, while you'll be recording a new take on a new track, your old take will start playing through your headphones because you have not yet muted that track and it is already a part of the playlist. So if you're going to record a new take, it's best to make sure that you mute any other takes that you already have so that you don't hear two things going on at once inside of your headphones. Another handy way to make sure that you have several takes of recordings is to designate a loop within the playlist into which we'll record over and over again. Let's remember that we can make loops within the playlist by holding down Control or Command and then clicking and dragging along the time bar. Now, as long as we enable loop recording up here, then when we record, every time that we reach the end of this small space, then the recording will go on to the next track and begin once again from the beginning of our highlighted area. This is especially helpful if you're recording into a song at a very specific point and you want to have multiple takes quickly to make sure that you get it right. I just use that loop recording method now, but one important thing to note is that now all of the clips that were made in loop recording are muted. So we're going to want to make sure that we click on them with the mute unmute tool 
if we want to hear them. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to hear them in the playlist. With all of that being done, I'm going to delete all of our recorded data because next we're going to move into the channel rack and how to record there, which has nothing to do with the microphone input for now. So I'm going to get rid of this and then we're going to move into the channel rack. Once the channel rack is open, what we're going to do is head on up to our recording function, which has been engaged this whole time, right click it and make sure that the only thing selected is notes. We're also going to make sure that we're in pattern mode. We do both of these things because instead of recording audio into the playlist, which would mean we'd be on song and recording audio, we're bringing in note data to the channel rack. So we select note and pattern. Now, before we start recording, it's getting a little bit annoying to hear the constant drowning of a recording microphone in our ears. So let's head on down to the insert where we have our microphone and we can either mute it or in the case of what y'all have been doing, which means you actually have an input going into your recording channel, select back to none so that you don't have a constant signal being fed into your mixer. We're finally ready to record into the channel rack. So when you're ready, let's hit play and play along with the beat. I've selected the kick, but you can do whatever you want here. As you can see, our channel rack has shifted over to showing piano roll data because we've recorded the notes into it. An important note here is that we're recording on a loop inside the channel rack. If we were to hit play again and start the recording process over, we would still be on the kick drums channel. And if we were to play note data over what we already recorded, then our old recording would be replaced. This is important to keep in mind. Let's disengage the recording function and listen back to what we just made. It's not really in time. Let's fix that up now. What we're going to do is go into the piano roll and we're going to delete these notes that we just made rather than even fixing them in the piano roll because we're going to show you a way to get it right on your first time recording. Let's re-engage the recording function again. We're going to make sure that we click out of that initial window and that only notes are designated. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on our metronome button here. With that selected, we're going to record and it'll be much easier to play along with the beat. Perfect. Now we can go into the piano roll and we can see that almost all the notes are perfectly at time, except for this one kick note. We're going to try and realign it, but we see that our snap settings won't let us. So let's hold down Alt and then easy drag it right onto the line. And voila, we have a kick drum that's perfectly in time with our patterns beat. Let's exit out of the piano roll and continue making this beat. Let's select the clap and start the recording process again. And then we'll just go down the channels and put in note data that sounds good. Then we can stop and we will have recorded an entire pattern. just like that, you recorded a pattern. Let's take a look at that pattern that we just made in our playlist sidebar right over here. We're going to go over to our pattern and note data and drag it right on into the playlist. Now, if you're familiar with our series, then you've seen us do this before, but it's so important that it's worth repeating now. Here we have our pattern with all sorts of different instrument or channel data. Let's say that we want some more control over it and we want to split it by the instrument that we have. Well, what we're going to do is first we're going to select this pattern's options and we're going to click make unique. A small dialog box is going to appear and we're going to make it unique anyway. Now with the same data but called pattern 2, we're going to right click on our pattern picker and select split by channel. What this is going to do is it's going to give us the ability to drag in patterns that are only the instruments themselves from the pattern. Now what we could do is we could take these and send them down to each individual track and replicate them as we go. We can also now have much greater control over each of these instruments and we can change them and edit them within the mixer and in other ways without disturbing the overall pattern. The last thing we're going to talk about is recording using the blend recording or overdub option, which is right here. What this essentially means is that as we record, especially on a loop, 
If we're recording over old data and we play a new note, then the old data will still remain. This is helpful if you're trying to add on to an existing pattern or channel, or if you're doing a loop video of a beat on YouTube and you want to be able to fix something that you might have left out on the fly, you're going to want to make sure that Blend Recording Overdub is selected. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Let's be sure to save our project before we close out because we might end up using it on our next lesson. Looking forward to seeing you next time, and this is Miriam Music, signing off.